I wanted to make this video as a reference for people who are new to using Talon Voice who are interested in the eye tracking capabilities that come packaged with Talon. I often see in the Slack channel <coughs> new users and prospective users asking about how the eye tracking works and kind of what it's all about. So I thought a video that shows and explains what's going on with the eye tracking would be helpful. Um, this is going to be a long video. There's kind of a lot of stuff to go over from a new user's perspective. I also just talk a lot. Um, so there'll be a, a timestamp. I'll timestamp this video so that you can just skip to whatever you are interested in. Um, should also be noted that I believe there is a new control mouse in development currently. So that will probably replace what I'm talking about here. I think it's supposed to handle blinking better and it's a smoother experience from what I've heard. So it's exciting, but um, for now, this is what Talon has to offer. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so in terms of what you'll need to get this to work, uh, first thing, you'll need the you know, Talon community repo on GitHub. It, technically, the eye tracking will work without it, as in it will detect your eyes and move the cursor, but you're not really going to be able to do much else. So it's you, know, you should really get this. So this is Talon Hub forward slash community on GitHub. Um, I'll put a link to these different things like in the description also. Um, so you just go to code and if you know how to use Git, you can do it through this or you can download the zip and do it that way. Uh, you're also going to need a Toby 5 eye tracker. So there are some instructions on the Talon wiki uh, that talks about how to install it if you're on Mac, Linux, or Windows. <laughs> um, important to note, you can't just use a normal webcam. Talon, that's not at least how Talon works right now, uh, but you need this Toby 5 eye tracker. A normal webcam isn't going to do anything for you. Uh, these run about 300-ish in the U.S. right now. Um, so anyways, it's a little bit of an investment, even though the public version of um, Talon is free. So I thought it's worth, you know, um, going over this so people know what they're getting into. Um, let's see, uh, right, so when you are setting this up for the first time, I'm, I'm kind of unsure on this, but I think you have to plug it into a Windows machine first before you can use it like on a Mac or Linux, and I think it's because Toby ships this with like broken firmware or something, and a Windows update fixes it. I'm unsure, but my impression is that you have to plug this into a Windows machine first, so just make sure you're aware of that. Um, this thing also gets mounted on the bottom of your monitor. You know, webcams usually go at the top. This goes on the bottom. And uh, the sensors are angled to look up to get more of your eyes. And it's because it uses near, um, uh, near infrared light to reflect off your corneas. And then that's how it understands where you're looking. So um, just good to know about that. Uh, and if you're on a Windows machine, again, it tells you how to install it here, but if you're on a Windows machine, there are three services you have to um, actually disable because Talon has its own drivers, it's doing its own thing, it's not using the Toby stuff at all. So if this Toby stuff is on, Talon won't be able to recognize it. Um, and actually, so if you're going to do that, if you type in services and open the services app, you can see that. Go on down to Talons okay, or Toby. So you've got this service, this service, and this service. You have to disable these or turn them off. Um, you can right click, go to properties, and you can set the startup type to disabled. Uh, and then you should be able to also like stop the service if it's currently on, so you don't have to like restart your system. Uh, but once you know you have the, the Toby plugged in and you've disabled these, then Talon will recognize it. Um, there's a couple or a few disclaimers I'll bring up first. Um, so I actually have a condition in my mainly in my right eye, but my left eye a little bit too, called keratoconus, and it means my cornea is not uh, shaped uh, like spherically; it, it's a little misshapen. Um, and the Toby eye tracker actually picks that up, so it means that it's not the most accurate for me. Um, so I may not be really the best person to be demonstrating how well this works because 
uh, my inaccuracy won't be reflective of your accuracy. Uh, I've heard people on the uh, Slack channel say they're pretty surprised about how accurate it is. So um, you're going to have to take that as a grain of salt as we're going through this. Um, but uh, Talon has a way to um, do one eye tracking. So I'm able to use my left eye to track and ignore the right eye. My left eye isn't perfect either, but it's better. So it does help improve the accuracy. Um, and I'll, and so I'll demonstrate how both of those work in this so you get an idea in case like maybe you have a lazy eye or you have like some scarring on your cornea from a surgery or something. So um, I'll, I'll get into that. Um, I'm also uh, using the beta version, um, which is at this point 0 0.4.0, you know, blah, blah, blah here. Um, so the beta is uh, something you can sign up for on the Patreon. It's a monthly subscription that you do, and it helps fund the project, you know, which is a good cause, and you get all the latest updates as they're released. Um, but the uh, free version, the public release, is the 0 0.4, and everything I talk about in here should apply to that as well. So I don't think you're missing out on any of these features in this video if you're using the free version. Uh, and then last thing is I'm going to be using um, keyboard shortcuts here, little hotkeys. Just since I'm recording a video, it's going to be easier for me just to click buttons instead of having to like turn uh, Talon voice like on and off to like to speak commands and stuff. Um, so just so you're aware, um, that's what I'll be doing. Uh, and actually what I'll do, so well this is my Talon file just for this video, right? I've got the different uh, commands hooked up to certain uh, F keys here. And uh, one thing that I get, or that I see often in the by new users is they're wondering where do you find these different actions? You know, where do I find the action to toggle control mouse on and off if I want to use a voice command or a keystroke or whatever? So the way you do that, you go to the menu, scripting, and you go to the console REPL, which stands for, was it read? read eval print loop. So if you type in actions dot list, two parens, two quotes, and then type in tracking. Here you go. So this is um, all of the actions that you can call with commands uh, that are related to the tracking in Talon. So you have like, uh, you can toggle the control mouse, uh, you can toggle the legacy mouse, the zoom mouse, I um, gaze toggle, head toggle, all that stuff, uh, which we'll go on to all this. A lot of these are basically, they're just, it's in the menu here, go to eye tracking, and it's a lot of this stuff turning it on and off. So that's what this is. Um, and you can also search for, say, like if you want to figure out what mouse um, actions can you call, you can type in mouse in here instead. If you leave it blank and you just hit enter, it just populates it with like all the actions that you have on your computer, I think. So anyways, just good to know. That's how you can find that out. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, without the way, let's move into actually control mouse. So how does it work? What does it do? Uh, control mouse is uh, in Talon is integrated by using both eye tracking and head tracking. The eye tracking, as you do most of your work, it's wherever you're looking on the screen, the cursor follows it, right? So it's a one-to-one -one kind of thing. Um, then there, uh, once you get the cursor around to where you want it to be, if it's not accurate enough, you can then use your head to move around. And Talon will turn off the eye tracking momentarily so that you can use your head to make a fine-tuned selection. Um, the head tracking is less sensitive, right? So like you, you, I don't think you can even move the cursor from the middle of the screen to the edge of the screen. Uh, it, so the sensitivity is lower so that you're using it to fine tune a selection and use your eyes to like make gross movements. Um, let's see. Uh, you're looking at my notes here. Oh yeah. Also the, the way the head tracking works is you have to move at a certain uh, speed. There's a speed threshold. You have to move your head. So if you're moving quick enough, then it works. That way, 
things like blinking or moving your eyes elsewhere shouldn't disrupt where the cursor is. So we'll go into that. Um, there are also, uh, actually, if we look, so if you look at the at the eye tracking menu here, there's control mouse, which is kind of the main one which we'll go over. There's also the zoom version and the legacy version. Uh, these two are older versions, so they're not being worked on. This is really the the one that's um, recommended to be used primarily, and most of these settings only relate to this guy here. So with this guy, you can um, use two eye tracking or one eye tracking, and I personally use left eye tracking because it allows me to ignore my right eye, which is which has more of the condition than my left eye. Um, so when I use both eye tracking, it actually, the right eye influences the result and it actually makes it less accurate for me. Um, so we'll go over it. I'll go over both single eye and double eye tracking so you can see how that all works. But most of the things relate to control mouse here. Um, so we'll go through all this. Um, all right. So let's turn on control mouse. So now you can see where I move, where I look, the cursor moves, right? <clears throat> So uh, also good to know is that when you uh, move your mouse on your, like on your desk, like a physical mouse, it will actually take precedence over the tracker. So let's see if I can show you how that works. So if I'm, okay, looking around here, and then now let's say I'm, let's say I'm going to want to like move the cursor to what is Talon down here. So if I'm looking up here, I move the cursor. So you see, it'll still want to go up as soon as the mouse stops moving or whatever. But anyways, so this mouse does take precedence, but there's obviously a little like, um, they interfere a little bit with each other. So um, anyway, so let's, okay, I'm using my hand mouse. I'll try to make it obvious I'm using my hand mouse or eye tracking so you kind of get the idea. Uh, so let's go to this. So it's a little... Uh, just JPEG I, I made just to kind of show some like how accurate things are. Um, so first thing we'll do is, okay, so I'm gonna look at this five dot, right? So I'm looking at it, it's gonna be a little off for me. But as I look, and if I'm not moving my head and not blinking, it's a very still cursor. It's pretty good. Uh, when I blink, it moves. I think that's just kind of normal. Some people learn to just not blink as they're doing something. Uh, so that's kind of how that behavior works. And if I look at two, it's there, three, one. Uh, tip for most people, the center of the screen is the most accurate and the sides of the screen become less accurate. Uh, because of my issue, some areas of the screen are more accurate for me than others. So like I'm looking at the one dot and it's pretty off. If I look at the nine dot and well, it's a little off, but it typically does better in this area for me. Um, uh, also, so as you'll note, like, so let's say I'm looking at the five and I want to make a better selection. I can move my head and make that selection. So I'm looking at the five dot this whole time. It's pretty close. Let's look at the 12 dot. Move up. Boom, up. Boom, there we go. I'll look at the two dot. Boom. So that's kind of how this works. Uh, the idea too is that as you're moving your head, the eye tracking should stop. So the idea is if you move your head, then if I'm looking at the three, it's not moving to the three. If I look at the six, it's not moving to the six. Um, also, if you're moving your head fast enough, it should stop blinking. So I'll show that off. So I'm gonna look kind of in this left side and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna start blinking and be moving my head. So so oops, hold on. Got to move my head fast enough. I don't usually move my head fast enough. Okay, how about more in the center of the screen? So hopefully you can see how fast I'm blinking, and it's not um, influencing the cursor. Uh, now I typically move my head kind of slowly, so it tends to not be as. Sometimes it kind of jumps around on me when I don't want it to. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how that works. Um, so let's try reading some text here. Okay. Let's get this up. 
So one issue that uh, I think can people will have is that reading text can be kind of annoying, right? If the, if the cursor is always following you. So let's pretend I'm reading this, right? What is Talon? Talon is a hands-free input replacement of the keyboard and mouse. Talon enables people who have limited use of their hands or want to stop using their hands to write code, play video games, and in general, have unrestricted use of their computer. So, you know, the cursor is following me around. That can be kind of annoying. So what do people do? Uh, usually people have just a way to manually turn off the, um, the eye tracking, right? So, for example, uh, for me, I have this... Um, command right here, which will just toggle it off and hit F5. Uh, th there are three ways I guess you can do this as far as I know. You can turn off the hardware itself, which is what I'm doing here. When I hit F5, um, it just stops, so I can read the text now. Talon is a hands-free input replacement, blah blah blah. Cursor doesn't follow me. Um, you can also uh, turn off the gaze and head tracking, and I guess that way the hardware stays on but the algorithm just stops like taking inputs. Uh, so that's an option as well. And I think the community repo even has a way to make the cursor invisible. So there are those options. Um, and the way you can map this is obviously there's voice commands, which, um, you know, Talon voice, it's all about voice commands. Uh, you can um, use keystrokes like I have in my Talon file. Uh, you can also use a foot pedal I think the Elgato is the one that some people use and seems to be integrated well. Um, and you can even use like an Xbox controller. There's gamepad support. Uh, not for outputting game uh, commands, but for, for taking in commands. So if you have a controller, you can map the buttons on the controller to any of the commands. So uh, there's that as well. Um, Oh, yeah, right. You can also use, if you're subscribed to the beta, you can use Parrot. And Parrot is a, uh, a separate program, but it's integrated with Talon in the beta. And it allows you to record sounds, like different kinds of, you know, clicks and, and tisk sounds and shushing and that kind of thing. And uh, then you could use one of those to uh, map with commands. So maybe you want to be what turns off the eye tracking, you could do that with Parrot. Uh, so there's some options. Talon also does come with popping and hissing um, by default, but you know we're not going to get to that right now. Um, so I guess what I'll show off next is the debug view. Um, so let's go back here. So I'll turn on the eye tracking. Uh, and the control mouse by default has gaze tracking and head tracking on. So um, when we go to here, these guys are on by default, right? Just as a refresher using both eyes and control mouse. So now we're going to turn on the debug view. Okay. All right. So now you've got all these like dots showing up. So what does all this mean? Uh, I'm not completely sure, but as far as I can tell, the, uh, the red and blue dot represents where Talon sees my eye uh, on the screen. Again, for me, it's more inaccurate because of my issue. And then I believe the yellow dot is where the cursor actually ends up. Um, if I look more over here, let's say I think, I think left is, let's see. Yeah, I think my left eye is red and yeah, right eye is blue. So um, for me, down in this area, I think it's pretty good. Excuse me. But then maybe up more in this area, it's a little off. For me, it's really off down here. This is where the issue is. Actually, the so you can see the blue dot does not get down to the taskbar, even though I'm looking at like my Firefox symbol down there. That's how far off my right eye is. And it's because my right cornea is steeper on the bottom of my eye than the top, so it just throws things off. But the left eye gets down there, which is why I use one eye tracking. Um, you also notice that as I move my head, these circles appear. So this shows that head tracking is on, and it has to do with, uh, I believe, if you're looking within the circle, uh, 
Talon will not jump the cursor into that area, so it gives you space to look around the cursor without the cursor wanting to like jump around. Um, so the idea, right, is that if I'm if I'm moving my head quickly enough, I can look. Let's see. I think as you get out of the circle, that's when it pops over. But I think that as soon as you're moving your head, you can see I'm looking to the right. It's not popping over. That's, that's how it's supposed to work. Um, okay, so now what I want to do is I want to show you how single eye tracking works because it works a little bit better for me. Uh, there's no way to turn... Uh, to 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 swap these out with a command with like a, a shortcut, you have to use the menu for these um, eye bits. So let's go left eye only. Okay, so we'll turn it on. Okay, so now it's following the yellow dot. So even though the right dot is is maybe off in certain areas, it's not using that um, to determine where you're looking. So. That's why this works better for me. It's still obviously a bit off. I'm, I'm looking at the 5 dot. It's not bad. Look at the 10 dot. Not bad. 2, not bad. Um, 12, 13, 12, 13. Um, so it kind of works out OK. But the thing to note is how jittery it is, right? So let me, let me turn off this. OK. So I'm looking at the 5 dot. I'm not moving my head. I'm not moving my eyes. And it's jittery. So that's the trade-off. You are only using one eye's worth of data, so you know it's uh, there's just not enough data to stabilize it. So that's just sort of a caveat to it. But it is possible to use. You know, you use your head, you can get it to where you want to go, and then it's not jiggling around as you're using your head. So um, that can work for you. Uh, and let's see. I guess the next thing I'll look at here. Turn this off. I'm going to show off the sort of a secret secret mode uh, that exists. It's another way to use control mouse. So we're talking about how when you have control mouse on and you're looking around, maybe you're trying to read something, it's always following you and you have to manually um, turn it on and off, right? Um, maybe you don't want to do that. So there is actually another way you can handle this. So if you go to eye tracking, if you turn off gaze control, uh, intuitively it makes it seem like the eye tracking is just turning off completely. That's not totally true. What's happening is that the cursor will no longer follow your eyes as you move around the screen. Uh, it's only, your head is the only thing that influences the constant movement of the cursor. However, if you look far enough away and move your head, the cursor will pop over or like teleport over to where you're looking. Uh, so let me demonstrate that. And I'm using two eye tracking for this. That's kind of important. Okay, so I'm using control mouse. So let's look at the five. Okay, now I'm not going to move my head. I'm going to look at the three. Move my head. It moves up there. Look at the one. There you go. Look at the two there. So obviously two eye tracking is bad for me, right? But that's how you can get the um, the cursor to move around. So here, let's move over back to this. Okay. So I'm going to, so before when I was reading this, right, as I was looking around, the cursor was jumping around with me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to keep the cursor right here and I'm going to read without moving my head. Talon is a hands-free input replacement for the keyboard and mouse. Talon enables people who have limited use of their hands or want to stop using their hands to write code, play video games, and in general have unrestricted use of their computer. So you can see the cursor is still. As long as I move my head, the cursor doesn't move. Uh, as you look away, I think the cursor moves a little bit, but uh, when I'm looking at the cursor like I am now, it doesn't move unless I move my head a little. Uh, so this is another way you can do things. If you don't like the cursor constantly jiggling around with your eyes, you can do it this way. I mean, anytime you, you know, move your head a little bit, it might pop over. Um, your success rate with how it pops over may vary. For example, come on, let's go to the five. 
So if I move my head really slowly, so I'll move it really slowly. I'm going to look at the three really slowly. Blinking, moving, blinking, moving. It never goes over because it's not about distance. It's about speed. So if I look at the three, move quickly, there you go. Um, so it's just good to know that's how that works. Um, if you're wondering if there's a way to just completely turn off the eye tracking, um, actually what I'll show you is, here, turn this off for a sec. Let's go to, let's turn on debug view. Okay, so I have that mode set where the gaze tracking is off. So the gaze tracking is not um, being used to constantly move the cursor, but the eye tracking is not just like off or prevented. You know, the hardware is still on, so Toby is still figuring out where my eye is. It's just not moving the cursor there until I move my head. But if you're hoping there's a way, at the moment anyways, to just totally have the eye tracking not influence your head movements or whatever, right? Um, if you want to be able to move your head freely without having the cursor jump around where you're looking, there's no way to do that right now. Um, I hope that gets added in at some point. Maybe the new control mouse will have a feature like that. I don't know. Um, but anyways, so that's, that's kind of how this works. Okay. Uh, now, the reason why I said it was important at first to have two eye tracking is because this feature does not really work with one eye tracking, and I'll show you. Okay, so I have one eye tracking. I'm gonna look to the one, pop over, quickly, quickly, no, How about the three. Did pop over to the three. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, nine. About seven, no, five. For me, it tends to work more in the center of the screen and maybe a little bit either at the three or like the six area, sometimes at the four area. Can you even see the, you can see the four. So that tends to be where it, it like gets enough data. And I think that's the issue. I think single eye tracking, there's not enough data to make this feature work. Um, so this is the closest you can come at the moment to not uh, having eye, not having that feature occur while you're trying to do stuff. You have to use single eye tracking, and then more often than not, that feature doesn't activate. Um, so it's kind of a finicky workaround if you don't want that at the moment. Okay. So let's turn this off, go back to two eye tracking. So that's probably what most people will be using. Um... Let's see, let's move over, okay, yes, to gaze focus. Okay, so the gaze focus feature right here, let's go over this, um, basically allows you to focus a window by just looking at it instead of having to select it. So Talon voice uh, commands you've written might be context sensitive. You know, maybe you have something for your word editor and you have something for a browser and those commands only work while that's active. So gaze focus allows you to just look at it and have it active instead of having to click on it to make it active. Um, so let's see how this works. Actually, first of all, scope help, help scope. Okay, so, all right. So this is gonna tell us what we're focused on. So, let's see, do I have, okay, case focus on, and all right, let's turn on control mouse. So here I'm looking at Talon. You can see app.app .app Talon right here. Now I'm going to look over at my word editor. You can see that it's now looking at Notepad++. And let me look over here, and now it's looking at Firefox. So you can see this is how the gaze tracking works. Um, I did have a weird glitch where I had, I have an Evoluent mouse as well, and there was like an Evoluent service that was on, and when that was on, it would, this wouldn't work. So depending on what programs you have running, um, it could interfere with this potentially. So that's how that works. Okay. Um, let's hide this. Uh, let's see, and then next thing is the Okay, mouse jump. So mouse jump is, I don't really understand 
how you use this, uh, like what, what setup is, is best for this, but the idea is that when you move your physical mouse, the cursor will jump over to wherever you're looking. Um, so let's we'll turn on debug view, turn on control mouse. Okay, so um, I have gaze tracking off, so it's only going to move if my head moves. And let's, let's get this little guy here. Okay. So you can see my mouse. Let's say I'm looking at the 13 with the mouse. It moves over. Look at the 8. Moves over. The 3. Moves over. So I guess maybe that's a setup you use. So that's how that works. Um, of course, if you move your head at all, that will also be detected in this mode. So um, it seems like they would interfere with each other. I'm not sure what the like what the best setup is um, to make that work consistently. Um, so that basically does it for control mouse. You know, we went over gaze control, head control, um, mouse jump, gaze focus, the different eye sides, um, debug view. So now, um, well, let's check out legacy mode. And actually, good thing to note here is uh, you can have multiple modes on at once because they're just toggles. They're not like it's not like a button system. So if you have that, they will interfere. So just make sure you only have one on at a time. So we'll go to legacy mode. Uh, so this is the old way how control mouse used to work before the newer control mouse was uh, developed. Um, it's much more jumpy, I guess. And, uh, but it has the same idea where you can move your head to look at things. You can move your, or move your eyes to look at things. You can move your head to fine tune a selection. Some people like to use this over the new way. Um, I don't know if that's because they find it works better for them. They're used to the old way. Um, so it's an option you can check out. There's nothing you can do to customize it. It's just, as far as I know, this is just how it works. So you can always try this out. You know, it'll move with you as you're reading unless you turn it off. I believe that's here. So, you know, I could, I'm looking around the screen, nothing's happening, turn it back on, and now it's moving. Um, the other mode to look at is zoom mode. So zoom mode is very different. Legacy is just sort of like an older version of control mouse. Zoom mode is, is very different. Um, it doesn't use head tracking at all. It's only eye tracking. And it requires you to make popping sounds to zoom into areas. Um, I was having issues with the microphone earlier. Hopefully this will work to show you. But uh, when you when the way this works is you look at a certain area, the cursor does not follow you. When you pop, that area of the screen zooms in. And then at which point there's a little dot that you can like move around the screen with your eyes. And when you pop again, it'll actually select that and it'll zoom back out. So I'll show you how this works. So you can see as I'm, well, for one, since it's using two eye tracking, my um, accuracy is really off. I have to look um, off target to see things. So I'm looking at the 12 dot, it's not going there. I'll look up to the right a bit, up a bit, down. You kind of have to figure out, look off target to get it to fit something like that. But that's just me, right? Because that's my, that's my issue. Um, some people will find that that works really well for them. Um, let's see. Yeah, since it's only two eye tracking, if you have an issue with one eye, it may cause an, a problem. And um, if it's not super accurate for you, then it is kind of annoying because you have to look off target all the time in order to get to things. Um, and you can see that. So there, there's the the cursor there, but you just ignore that. You want to look at the dot that's moving around. That's the thing that's going to determine what you're selecting. So I really have to look off target in order to get that to work because of my issue. That can be really annoying. Um, but that's just how that works. Uh, the other thing that we'll go over then, because that's basically, let's zoom mouse for you. Let's go over calibration. So calibration is something that you do for, I guess, any of these modes. Um, does what it, you think it will do. It calibrates, your, it calibrates the, uh, I guess, talent algorithm with your eyes and everything. There are nine dots that you look at. Uh, when you look at these dots, it doesn't matter if the cursor is over them or not. You just have to look at them with your eye. So I'll turn on control mouse so you can see how this is going to work. You just ignore the cursor. 
you look at the dots, it takes about 30 seconds. So let's let's do that. So I'll use my shortcut. Okay, um, and so once you run that, then obviously it's going to calibrate everything for the for the rest of your session. Um, I would say that it seems that it's helpful. You you want to calibrate uh, when the lighting changes dramatically. So if you're working in a really well lit room earlier in the day, and then the lighting becomes much dimmer, you might want to run the calibration again. Uh, if things aren't as like accurate as you think they should be, you might just need to recalibrate. So um, you may or may not need to do that often or infrequently, just depends on your setup and how that works. Um, but it is very quick to do. So, um, you know, it's worth those extra 30 seconds if you're having issues with uh, your accuracy. Um, the last thing that I sometimes see on the forums is people asking, can you change the sensitivity of the eye tracking and the head tracking? Um, so the answer is no, as far as I'm aware, you cannot. Uh, the I never quite understood the, um, the request for eye tracking sensitivity because that is something that you want to be one-to-one -one all the time. Uh, head tracking I understand more, and uh, I could see how... Uh, that you know that would be a feature that would be requested i have no idea what goes on behind the scenes in terms of like is that a something that would even work with the algorithm or what um, um so anyways that's kind of the answer to that uh so yeah this has been a uh, an overview of how the eye tracking works in talon uh again there might be a new version on the horizon at some point so i'm excited to see what that's kind of about but this is how the eye tracking works uh, currently in Talon. Uh, I hope that this kind of gives you an insight into what you need, you know, the hardware you need, um, what you can do with it, how it works. I know I'm not the best person to demonstrate this because of my eye issue, but it does help you see how uh, single eye tracking can be helpful as opposed to the double eye tracking. And this should all now be available in the public release, the 0.4. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.